Hey, yo, it's Omni Dog talking to you live. Omni Bros live. Hello. How's it going, guys and gals? <clears throat> I'm doing it solo right now because Omar is stuck behind a tractor because apparently tractors rule the road in Kentucky. So I will be doing the show live. I'll do it live and I'll write it and we'll do it live and, and um, I'll do a darn good job until Omar joins me when he gets home. So first of all, a couple announcements. First, who sponsors this show? Why, it's In Stock Trades, of course, where you go to get up to 50% off on your books, loyalty discount, bomb-proof packaging, all kinds of sales, great customer service. If you order over $50 worth of books in the United States, you get free shipping. And did I say good customer service? Pretty sure I did. InStockTrades.com. That's where you want to go, Bunky. That's where you want to get your books. So you may be looking at my pretty face tonight and saying, Omnidog, what's going on with your face? Here's the deal. As a youth, I spent a lot of time in the sun. And now I'm paying for it. I grew up by the beach. And I've got skin cancer up the yin-yang all over my face. I must have had 150 stitches in my face because of squamous cell cancer taken out of my face. So I go to the dermatologist and she's freezer zaps all this stuff on my face that's precancerous. So my message to you is stay out of the sun. Even though you look like a tan god or tan goddess, don't do it because it started in my 40s and it's been painful. So stay out of the sun. There's the end of my lecture. So, Omnidog, you're saying, what did you haul this week? It turns out I actually did haul some things. I forgot. Not only did I haul books, but I hauled some records and some uh, Marvel Collector Core box. Yeah, I did use sunscreen, kid. <clears throat> it's the places where I missed it with the sunscreen. Um, uh, Omnipool, I'm sorry. Yeah, it can be painful. Uh, so what did I haul? I did haul a couple things. No, I'm not dying. Thank you very much, Chris M. First, what came in? Herbie Books. Herbie Popnecker. Volume 1. Volume 2. Volume 2 is damaged from IST. Oh, there's the damage. I couldn't even see the damage. It's, I don't even know if I could, you can see it. There, there's the damage. Big deal. I got it for like 65% off. Um, oh, wait, who's, somebody's dying? Oh, Tolga, are you all right? Um, here's the damage that I, I didn't even see. So let's take a look into Herbie and see what it's like. Here's some of Herbie, and I have a feeling this is going to be an acquired taste book. It appeals to me. It may not appeal to you, but it appeals to me. The Fat Fury with a toilet plunger on his head. It's Alan Moore's favorite comic book, so I am way into this kind of book haven't read it yet but i will and i will because i've got volume three in the mail supposedly hasn't come yet but i'm looking forward to that and god bless ist for their damage sale this is nothing and i got it for dirt cheap oh they're worried about me no i'm fine thank you very much the next step is melanoma that's what my dermatologist is worried about that's why i go in every three months to get screened for uh, sc uh skin cancer and these are just preventative zaps that are all over my face. I uh, sorry, Benjamin, I haven't started reading it yet, um, but I will. Uh, I will, and I will give it a review. Um, I may dedicate a whole episode to it. <laughs> I don't know. It looks pretty good. Um, also, I hauled. Um, well, I hauled Descender Four. This is a read, so that doesn't call as, count as a, a haul. Um, 
I hauled and read Motor Girl Omnibus. Is that upside down? Right side up? There it is. And here is some of the great art in Motor Girl. Black and white, as is typical with Terry Moore. I will say this book is amazing. I don't care if you get it soft cover, hard cover, what, however you want to get it. This book is amazing. It had me guessing throughout the whole book. Took me places I totally did not expect. I don't want to show you too much. Took Because it took me places I totally did not expect it to go. And boy, did I like it. Terry Moore, your ace is in my book. And it came with a signed, numbered book plate, number 106. So Terry Moore, Motor Girl, that's what I hauled. Uh, it was, I, and I read that. I read it. It was great. Um, I, I forgot to bring it, but I hauled also Descender number five, and I read reread number four to get ready for number five. I haven't read it yet, but for those of you who haven't seen it, here's what Descender looks like. It is brilliant artwork and a brilliant story. Jeff Lemire, Dustin Nguyen, um, and it is just great. And I just reread volume four to get me ready for volume five. I have not upgraded and it's really wonderful. I think I can recommend it to all you guys. You guys would dig it. Um, great story. I, I don't know. I haven't read a Jeff Lemire book. Oh yeah. I did read a Jeff Lemire book. I didn't like what book was that? I may have tossed it. What the heck was that book called? Eh, it doesn't matter. Um, it was one about a group of teenagers. Does anybody remember uh, a book by Jeff Lemire that had to do with a group of teenagers doing something? It was not a very good book. I can't remember what it was. Um, maybe Plutona. Yeah, I did not dig that book at all. Thank you, Benjamin. Yeah, I'm sorry. I did not like it. But, but, I mean, given the fact that he's written, like, 30 different books, one dislike is not bad because um, the guy definitely writes to my liking. Uh, I, I definitely dig everything he has to write. Just Plutona didn't light me up. But Descender, woo, torches it. It's really great, and I got to read volume five. So, oh, I wonder if I... I need to read this too. I just found this. Maybe I already showed this as a haul. Um, next thing, since I'm killing time till Omar comes, because he's stuck behind a tractor, is I hauled the Marvel Collector Core box uh, called Animal Instincts. Uh, apparently, it's a very popular box. Um, and I can show you some of the things that I have from that box. First, you get a little rocket raccoon pen. Or is it a pencil? Pen. Here's rocket raccoon, little pencil. Now, Gabe is working, uh, Jesse, say what? G Gabe um, is working tonight. And then with that little pen is note paper with rocket raccoon's face on it. So that's cool. Uh, then uh, also you get a collectible pop of Rhino. So there's that, which is cool. If you're a Rhino fan, this is awesome. And for those of you who like wacky wobblers, the Black Panther wacky wobbler. is also included in the box. And the thing that everybody's excited about, the Howard the Duck t-shirt. That's pretty bitchin'. 
I have to say, this is one of the better t-shirts I've gotten. I really dig this t-shirt. So this is what came in the Marvel Collector Core box that I got this week. It's really cool. Can you see it? I'm sure you can. Okay. Next up, I got two really cool... Oh! And the source material is nothing to be sniffed at. And number 17 Hello. is an unusual... What are we listening to? I was listening to a podcast. Oh. Not a fucking 11 o'clock comics, I hope. No. no. I wouldn't cheat on you, Jess. Everybody, Luis from <laughs> Comics Guide 101. Howdy, howdy. Let me get my headphones. I just realized that. <clears throat> oh, you sound fine. Huh? You sound fine. Oh, I do? Yeah. I mean, you can go get them, but you sound fine. Oh, cool. Whatever. So how's it going, Luis? It's going, man. Uh, what are we? What have you gone through so far? Oh, geez, these cats. What have you gone through so far? Um, I went through books that I hauled, and I just got done showing um, my Marvel Collector Core box. And here's something that might interest you, even though you're not a vinyl collector. I know you're a horror movie fan. Mm -hmm. And this is the soundtrack to what movie? <laughs> is that Hellraiser? Yes. Oh, that is beautiful. It's the four soundtrack is on 45s in this thing. Oh, that is beautiful, man. And it took me a minute to figure out how to open it. <laughs> I think it's like, And I'm like, if I open it, is freaking Pinhead going to come out and get me? So uh, things to show you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm actually opening it for the first time because I just got it. Oh, that is beautiful. And so in it are the 45s. The whole soundtrack is on 45s, which is going to be a huge pain in the ass to play. And it's, it's still a beautiful box set, though. Yeah, it really is. Wow. Man. Ooh. All the 45s. I mean, I'm going to... Ooh, look at this dude. I forgot Cenobites. about him. I love Cenobites. They're fucking weird. And yeah. Uh, okay, so far I haven't gone to hell yet, so it must be safe. <laughs> I was kind of disappointed last night. Toby Hooper got no love at the Oscars. Here's Pinhead right here. Yeah, it's an iconic. Just, ah. Uh, uh. I know. Are you a Hellraiser fan? Uh, I love the first two. I especially love the first one, but I didn't watch any. I didn't watch three or four. Um, yeah, those are the only ones you need to watch. Yeah, I love the first two. Um, so yeah, and you know, here's an interesting fact on this box. This is how nerdy people really get. I mean, if you think comic fans are nerdy, um, record collectors and horror fans. Uh, or even nerdier, I guess, because <laughs> apparently this box is not exactly like the box in Hellraiser. It's, I mean, it's close enough that you knew what it was, but um, apparently they're going to be sending me out a new box to match exactly <laughs> what the one was in Hellblazer. I mean, Hellraiser. Really? Um, yeah. Um, I got a thing from Mondo the other day that said that they were going to um, uh, send out new boxes with the proper design. I couldn't have told you it wasn't the right design. It looks scary to me. I'm worried about going to sleep tonight. Um, and then the last thing I hauled, unfortunately, John P's not here, but maybe it, uh, he's pulled the night shift, unfortunately, for seven straight weeks. Ooh. But um, I know. Um, here is... Uh, the Lush box set, a great British band from the uh, 90s, fabulous music that I like. And the reason I'm going to show it is because, of course, it, not only is it a box set, but it's got colored vinyl, which I love. Oh, you're a fan of the colored vinyl. I am. It's a sickness. Watch, the first one I pull out will be black. Marvel does the colored vinyl stuff, too. Okay, this one's clear. <clears throat> that's cool. And it also came with a download card, so that's cool. Let's see what color this one is. 
come here, you. <laughs> oh my God, there's like five albums in this thing. Let's say blue. You're going to say blue? I actually don't know because I just got it. Let's see. Let's throw a color out there. Come on, you. Mm -hmm. Oh, Luis, I'm sorry. Oh, damn. It's pink. Oh, okay. I guess that. That's a that's a pretty popular color for vinyl, isn't it? Uh, yeah. And we have some uh, lush fans in the group. That's great. I've never heard of them. Um, yeah, it's different music. It's uh, I think they're all. I believe they're all females. It's female vocalists anyway, and they play really harsh, jangly music with heavenly vocals ladled <laughs> over. So there's, I mean, there's a couple other albums, but I don't need to show you all the colored vinyl I got. Um, but that is what I hauled and read this week. Yeah. What about you? What you, You've you been reading a lot of manga, right? I've been reading a lot of different stuff this past week. Um, I guess I'll start. Um, uh, to start with, I'm catching up so far on Tom King's Batman. Ooh, I nice. Read, yeah. I've read through the I Am Suicide, the Annual, and the I Am Bane arc, and that's a run that just gets better as it goes along. You're totally it, right. It really does. Uh, I think the first few issues, I was a bit shaky on it. I'm like, Tom King doesn't seem to really have the Batman voice down, but it he nails it as it gets going and as he starts layering things, and you start seeing what he seeded in the first like arc the first six issues start playing out a lot more especially with bane i love what he does with the character of bane i i really dig the uh, depth and the um introspective look that he gives to a character that you know for a lot of comic book fans that they know the character he's just kind of a brute but if you go back to his early days when he first appeared bane was really intelligent he was a tactician he was the first one to break the bat um, I, I also enjoy the fact that he's really exploring the relationship with uh, Catwoman. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it, it, it really is. And it's it's about damn time that we start getting more of a solid foundation. None of this will they, won't they stuff. These are two adults that they have finally decided, you know what, we're both kind of a little bit, they both come to the conclusion that, yeah, we're both a little bit fucked up in the head and we're both a little, you know, we have our backgrounds and we have kind of similar backgrounds and we dress, one of us dresses like a cat, one of us dresses like a bat. And when they're out, they address themselves that way. It's like cat, bat. Right. Um, and they finally admit, look like we are perfect for each other. Like it, it just is like when uh, in one of the, in a beautiful set of panels, Batman says like, well, when I kiss you, it's like, uh, the pain stops for like a second and then it comes back after we're done because I know, you know, we shouldn't be together and all this other stuff. But it's it's absolutely a beautifully well done and well written. And it's a natural progression of a story that they are slowly unraveling through. I'm about 20 issues into it and I'm digging the hell out of it. And I think this is going to be uh, one of those runs. Hey, Omar. What's up, guys? Good, man. I think that um, what's really interesting about it is that Scott Snyder's run gets so much love, but Scott Snyder really explored the psychology of the relationship between Batman and Gotham, where Tom King is exploring the relationship of Batman himself and dealing with Bruce Wayne and dealing with the relationships around him. And yeah, he's got a little bit of that Gotham sprinkled in there, but it's not the center focus of the run like it was for Snyder's run. What I want is I, I haven't caught up yet to the actual bit I, I i all i've read is the first batman deluxe i haven't progressed into more of their romance but i want this romance to stick i don't want it to be like two issues and then something goofy happens no. i want this romance to stick for like a couple years and i want them to interact work their weird psychological things out well which they never will but i mean figure <laughs> out how to get together stay together work together um I, I to me that is a match made in heaven for a writer he can do so much with those two in love i i don't necessarily need to see him on a beach somewhere yeah. i need to see him in wayne manor washing dishes or something i want to see them <laughs> as a couple well, you, you get that you get a lot of that actually through his run especially as it goes on more and more um I don't know if you've read Batman yet, Annual Number Two, 
I have not. So don't ruin it for me. Okay, but it, the short of it is, it's a date night, and okay. you can follow it as a. It's a double date. I'm not going to ruin it with who. Oh yeah, I do know that. Okay, so it's a double date, and it's with. For those of you that don't want me to ruin even the, the minutest amount of detail of that, <laughs> it's a double date with Catwoman, and Bruce and Clark and Lois. And like it's it's a hilarious and it's a super fun issue and it's one that I really enjoy because you see them during downtime and act like normal people as normal as they can be. Um, and Tom King really it, it, so far we're about close to if I'm not mistaken there's like forty issues forty ish issues of this run and they're still together and they're still working things out and that's what I really like that's that's really what's interesting and fascinating about this run to me it's just that yeah we've had several writers and artists really tackle the relationship but you know it always ends up the same way oh you know we can't be together da, da, da. this run it's like no we are together we are a couple we have to work this out as a couple that is awesome I can't wait to read it <clears throat> So I, I just got in the last tidbit of the conversation. Are you guys talking about Captain America and Bucky? Because <laughs> 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 wait for it, Joe Casado's gonna fuck that up too. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good for a guy that was stuck behind a tractor for half an hour. That's what happens when you live in Kentucky. You're like, where do you live? You're not that far off, man. Yeah, yeah. You're in Virginia. <laughs> I know, I know. I've been in the back roads before, gotten stuck by an oh, and, the, and the guy can't take a hint. There's like 15 cars behind him, and I feel bad because you know he's doing work. He's hauling something, so I'm not gonna. They're jerks back there honking at him, and he's just like, "Hey, Bucky's robotic arm has two settings: murder and pleasure." So, <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Um, but we were talking about actually uh, Tom King's Batman run. I don't know if you're at all caught up with that, Omar. Or uh, no, I'm not. I'm. I mean, I'd say about six months behind. Oh, so uh, I've, read mo I've read most of them digitally, yeah. I haven't read Annual 2, though. I heard really good things. Um, I I look forward to collecting them in the hardcover like, uh, re yeah. Rebirth editions. And he is... That's a run that I I did not like at first. Thanks. I think I, I think I told you guys that. like I did not like those first six issues. But... The Gotham Girl and Gotham... Yeah. yeah, yeah I, right. I feel it was really weird. Yeah, Thanks. But... Uh, I um, I am suicide. All that stuff later on that came on. Um, after that issue seven, and onward, I've been. It's awesome. I dig it. It's a great run. I didn't care for the Monster Men stuff though. I could have left that. But yeah, that crossover was weird, and I I think Jess liked it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hate it. <laughs> That's okay. what I can say about it. I didn't hate it. I bought the book and read it, and I didn't hate it. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of it. I read a little bit of it. I read the Batman issues of it, and I'm like. Okay, and I just kind of like it's something that you could totally skip the Monster Men stuff and you'd be perfectly fine. Like, yeah, it's not necessary. You're right. Yeah, like I thought Jess liked it so much he went and bought the Monster Man hardcover, in addition to the already collected Nightwing, Detective, and Batman. I didn't like reading it the way it was <laughs> split up in those books, so I want I did buy it because I wanted to read it. Uh, as one experience, so yeah, I made fun of you and your first world problems. Oh no, I got to get three <laughs> books out of my shelf. <laughs> no, thank you. I'll spend the extra seventeen dollars to read it in one sitting. Yeah, that's I'm right. So, I'm so rich. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any hauls and or reads that you would care to talk about, Omar? Not done yet. Oh. Luis is no. not done yet. Awesome. <laughs> Was he? Wait, did you haul, or did you just? No, I don't know. I don't haul. Okay. <laughs> okay. I got excited. Time. I, I forgot this is soapbox guide one hundred and one. So. <laughs> hey, come on. I know. I'm teasing you. I know. Uh, I also read God Country. That was oh, uh, yeah. That was beautiful. Six yeah. inches. And that fucker flies. It is a quick read. I couldn't put it down. I was I probably finished God Country within the span of like thirty to forty minutes. It's yeah. not it's a fast read. It's a six issue miniseries. It's done. And it centers around this family and they basically show up into this podunk town. They have to move there because the husband's father, uh, the grandfather of the family, he has Alzheimer's. 
and he's getting worse. He's getting a lot worse. And it's those first few issues, if you have ever seen somebody with Alzheimer's and if you have ever experienced anybody that has it, it's it hits you rough. Um, they do not shy away from hitting, hitting the fact that you're basically slowly watching somebody fade away, the person that you know. Yeah. Um, when all of a sudden this huge storm hits the house and once the storm hits the house there's this sword that falls into the into the house and the old man gets it and all of a sudden he's back to normal he remembers everything he remembers like i'm getting chills just thinking about it. he remembers his family he remembers um spending time with them he remembers who every single one of them were um it's it, it's a beautiful book and you soon realize that the creator of the sword he wants this sword back so he sends all these different gods to get it and man it, it's just it's one of those reads that it's full of so many badass and quotable moments like in the issues that i were i was reading there's like shirts that have um in the back that says like come and get it and it has the sword on it i was like i really want the shirt of this now um it's set in texas and honestly if you want something that you can kill a good 30 to 40 minutes with so much heart and so much depth inside of it I absolutely recommend this read. I was almost left tearing up at the end of it. And it's a beautiful book. It's drawn spectacularly. They do so much with the quiet moments and the eyes. There's a big emphasis in this book on eyes, especially you notice the uh, grandfather's eyes at the beginning of the story when um, he has Alzheimer's. It's kind of like the eyes are really doesn't have any color. They're kind of lifeless versus when he has the sword, that brightness is back and you can see the life kind of come back to him as he remembers everybody. It's a beautiful, beautiful book. I couldn't agree more. It's wonderful. I think uh, anybody that's read it has praised it. I know Gio just did a review. Look, Jess like put down his crutches to go and get it. <laughs> um, I got it so I can show some of this fabulous artwork that's in God Country. Yeah. And it is amazing. And I haven't been on crutches for months, so shut up. <laughs> Sorry. Too many crickets. Oh, somebody <laughs> says in the chat, not the most uh, handsome granddad. And that's that's part of the appeal, I think. I really yeah. like that, that he's just an average-looking grandfather. He's got a gut. You know, he's an old man. Yeah. He it reminds me of uh, like. a little bit of Jeff Bridges in, like, his uh, true grit <laughs> kind of character. Right. That's exactly right. Um I love how badass the granddad is when he gets that sword. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's awesome. Great book. Uh, the last thing that I read, and just I'm going to fully recommend you pick this up. I think you'll Ooh. really enjoy this. And me and uh, me and Omar have been talking about this off and on for the past week. Oh, um, no. I hear a manga coming. I've been reading. No, All seven. right, calm your tits, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> Let the man talk. <laughs> uh, I've been reading Noki Urasawa's Monster, and God damn, that is good. That is really good. I read through the first volume. I'm halfway through the second volume right now. It's 18 volumes. Um, here's here's the general. Th this is right up your alley. I really think you would enjoy this, Jess, if you sat down and read it. A monster centers around, it's 1980, what would you say it was, Omar, 1986? It's before the fall of the Berlin Wall. Yeah, I can't remember exactly, because the manga and the anime are a little bit different, and I think you're right, it is like 86, 87, something like that. When it's... It starts 1986, and basically you have this doctor named Dr. Tenma. And Dr. Tenma, he's a renowned surgeon, he's making his way up the ladder, he's doing really well for himself. He's building his name up. He's dating the uh, head director's daughter. And one day, this opera singer comes in, and the opera singer, he is dying. And at the same time, a woman who has a family and everything like that, her husband is dying as well. The husband showed up to the hospital first, and Dr. Tenwell was supposed to work on the, uh, the husband. The director comes in, and he says, look, fuck that guy. Like he's, he's not rich. He's not wealthy. He's not going to really bring us anything. So we're going to go ahead and just, we're going to stick a B list, uh, surgeon on him. I want you to work on this opera singer. He reluctantly does it. And then the wife shows up and the wife, and this is all within like probably the first few pages of the, uh, first volume. So you're not missing much. This moves pretty quick. 
the wife shows up after and she's crying in the hospital room. This, this, the uh, opera singer was saved. And she's like, why didn't you work on my husband? My husband died because you failed to work on him. He was here first, you bastard. Like, and that sticks with Dr. Tenma. A few months later, the, the mayor ends up passing out in his house. He ends up dying. Uh, he ends up passing out in his house. And at the same time, this family, they're, they end up getting shot. And so does a little boy. And his twin sister is fine, but she's like in a catatonic state because she saw everything that happened. However, the boy, he is able to be saved. But Dr. Tenma, it kind of runs into the same situation where he's about to work on the boy and they say, no, you're going to work on the mayor. And because of the situation that happened a few months ago, he says, fuck that. I'm going to work on the boy. Fuck the mayor. I'm going to save this boy's life. He ends up saving the boy's life. After he ends up saving the boy's life, the mayor ends up dying. And he's basically, Dr. Tenma is shunned. He's basically given shit jobs. The director of the hospital is like, yeah, you're a joke now. Why didn't you do what I told you? That or, uh, the, what, the lady leaves him because she's really only into like really high and fancy doctors. And what ends up happening is that Dr. Tenma starts noticing these guys are dying. Like this director, the, the guy that was above me is all is dying. And that ends up ha allowing me to move up in the hospital because all these high position people are ending up dying. You flash forward 19 years later and there's a series, I think it's like 10 years later, and there's a series of murders that are happening. Well, it turns out that, and this is all basic stuff. It turns out that because he saved that boy's life, that boy is now a cold-blooded killer. Ooh. Yeah. Because he removed that bullet, the bullet from that boy's head, he is now a cold-blooded killer, and he's setting things in motion where he's a, he's, a, he's a mass murderer. Now he has to go around and try to find him. At least that's where I'm at so far. That's just You're the, basic the first volume, movie. right? Yeah. I'm still in the first volume, and I'm only about the sec halfway through the second volume. There's so much that happens in that series. Oh, no. Um, I'm glad that Viz brought it back into print. It like some of those volumes of Monster, uh, the original volumes were going well over a hundred dollars when they're out of print, and now they're in the two and one volumes. So anybody that likes enjoys a really good story, I think Tolga in the chat put it the best way. It is the most European manga. <laughs> it is so Hitchcock. It is so uh, there's all kinds of twists, and you kind of you know I. I, th I think when when you guys watch movies or when you read comics, you try to figure out what's going on, and you, you know, you you read enough or you watch enough, you kind of figure out a lot of the time. Oh, this is what's going to happen. This is one of those books that I was like, I got this. Oh shit, no, I don't. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't it's, see that coming. It's well, kind of an interesting take on a, on on a Frankenstein story because even he says in the book, "I brought you back to life from the brink of death," and you know, he later on says, "I've created my own monster." And he has to try to stop him. And that's the name of the book, by the way, Monster, if I didn't mention earlier. It's here's the here's the thing with Noki Urasawa. I love 20th Century Boys, but 20th Century Boys is a bit of a slow burn. It takes its time to get itself set up, it takes its time to start unraveling. This thing moves. And Noki Urasawa, within the first few pages, you get the motivation of different characters, you get the motivation of Johan, you get the motivation of so many of these people, and you get a clear understanding of who they are. This thing is brilliant. And it's absolutely one of the best things that I've read in a long time. And I can't wait to keep diving through it. Well, <clears throat> it may interest you to know that I have the first two volumes of that book. I bought them from the fabulous James Dayrit uh, about a year ago and just haven't read them. So I have them in my house and it sounds like I better read them. Yeah, I, I recommend you sit down with them. I, I'm telling you, you'll like this. This is right up your alley. All yeah. right, it's, it's all right. Solid, you just got to get used to the turn, like turning of the pages. You yeah. know, because it right. like your your typical manga. But right. once you get used to that, man, you'll be fine. It's a great story. I will definitely read it. Uh, I read My Hero Academia, and I adjusted to that. Mm -hmm. um, but my brain <laughs> adjusted to it, and then I tried to read a Western comic right after it, and my brain had to adjust again. So, <laughs> oh, was, you're not that old. Uh, Stop it. Shut up. It should turn like that. Bam, bam. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I've got both the first volumes, and I will read them. 
This week. I'll make my pledge. This week. Wow. He's been promising to like read books like a mm-hmm. lot lately. Yeah, Different but you don't books. remember any of them, so I'm off the hook. <laughs> yes, I do. What else have I said I'm going to read? You, you said them on videos. All I got to do is just watch the old videos. <laughs> Man, you read some really good stuff, dude. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been catching up with a lot of stuff over the. Like time. you, you read some deep stuff. Um, I just uh, you talked about what you read already. Yes, and I will show you the fabulous shirt I got, which is so bitchin' that you guys didn't get to see from my Marvel Collector Core box. Bitchin'. The audience. That's right, baby. Oh, it's boss. I really like it's that. Really yeah. cool. What do you think about that? This is okay. the best shirt I've ever gotten from Marvel Collector Core. I just dig the heck out of this. I'm going to wear this out in public proudly. <laughs> I was um when I went to watch Guardians of the Galaxy in the movie theater. I mean, I, I waited to see it because I was one of these guys. I was like, this movie's going to suck based on the previews. I know I was probably alone. Um, so I saw it the like it, it it had been out for about a week and a half. So I saw it with the normal crowd, the people that don't read comic books and things. And the best part was. <laughs> It's the after credits when Howard the Duck shows up. I was sitting behind a group of like, I don't know, they're probably like 18. They were in college and they were so confused. They were like, Is that <laughs> why is Donald Duck at the end of this movie? What does he have to do with comic? Like, they were asking so many and they were all on their phones trying to figure it out. That's awesome. To somebody in my audience, like, it's Donald Duck, and I wanted to go. Ah, <laughs> you gotta hold the nerd rage back, man. It's okay, you know. Um, cool, man. Well, yeah, you read some deep stuff. I didn't. I took a break from Love and Rockets and started reading, uh, rereading my Superior Spider-Man books. Ooh, you got that and, special cover. I love that special cover. Yeah, yeah. I went with the Ditko because that's the unused cover to Fantasy Fifteen. Um, I thought by now that this was one of those books that I'm like, we are surely going to get an omnibus of this because it's the perfect size for an omnibus. It is 31 issues. I guess 33, 34, including the special uh, Spider Island, not Spider Island, uh, the hell is that crossover? Spider-Verse books. Um, but we never did. And I could have, I, I, I would have bet money that we were going to get one of an omnibus. So yeah, these are just silly. Uh, but I really like this time in Spider-Man. This was Dan Slott killing it. I think this is probably my favorite Dan Slot time when Dr. Octavius or Dr. Octopus takes over the role of Spider-Man. Like he takes over Peter Parker's body and he becomes the superior Spider-Man. And, you know, just really fun. Um, I will say I miss Ryan Stegman on Spider-Man, though. That guy was awesome. I don't think he could have kept the monthly book, but his art was so on point. Um because it still has like a lot of Umberto Ramos stuff, but Ryan Stegman really did it for me. He was great. I, got, I yeah, I love his Spider Man. So this was this was great. Did you ever read this series? Just I did, <clears throat> I did back in floppies when it came out in floppies. I really liked it. Yeah, yeah. I just needed something fun. Yeah, That's it's a, fun. It's a fun book, but it was but it's done really well. Like I really enjoyed it. I love the hop, the hobgoblin, and the new, the new hobgoblin story that was introduced in here towards the end, like with the uh, the kid that was the green goblin. Oh, yeah, this is awesome. And then Return of the Spider Slayer. Just all these obscure characters. There's Ramos. Yeah, but that, so that's what I kind of reread. I read the first two volumes of that because they're also a quick read. They're nothing deep and heavy like you know God Country. But they are fun. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think that's uh, the way I would describe them. They're a lot of fun. Um, but as far as the hauls, I did not. I'm still waiting on my DCBS order. I just got emailed that it's shipping. So I normally do a haul video at the end of the month. But apparently I'm going to have to wait until probably Wednesday. <laughs> hey, um, do you have your near mint condition logo on your headphones? I do. Yep. Good, good eye, good eye. That is cool. I need to get my little Omni Dog on mine. Uh, now we're gonna put you a near mint condition logo on yours. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, so I'm waiting for my DCBS hauls because I've got like the Shadowland Omnibus coming and a couple other books that I pre-ordered that I hope I did not reorder through in stock trades because 
I'm stupid and I can't remember what I've ordered in, or pre-ordered in the past. Oh, uh, pre-orders the- kill me all the time. I always double order. I hate pre-ordering. <laughs> so stupid. Well, I try not to, but sometimes, like, it's been a while, though. Sometimes, like, an epic collection will show up, and I'm like, oh, shit. I already had that on order. <laughs> <laughs> So I always got to double check my DCBS order now when I go in the in-stock trades. Um, but yeah, that, 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 that's, uh, my haul is coming. It's just not here yet. And you are going to haul big this week, right? With that infinity gauntlet book box. Oh set boy. <clears throat> we will be addressing that when we look at the previews. Yes. This is going to be a big dog haul week for me next Monday. Uh, if it all comes in in time, this it will be major because there's several other books I want to get to. This it'll probably be my only order for the month, but it's going to be a biggie. Man, um, yeah, I, I don't think it'll be my. I, I'm I'm not gonna lie to myself. It is definitely not gonna be my only order for the month. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> but I mean, we got so many damn books coming out, dude. Like. Well, I mean, do you want to look at the previews that are coming out? or? Yeah, sure. All right, cool. Do you have the sheet handy, or do you okay. want me to share? Let me or... see if I can do it. Well, uh, here's that up. Were you talking about Superior Spider-Man? Yeah, man. Yeah. I'm just rereading it well, again man. for the uh, sure. second time. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And I was, I, w- I was sure by now we would have an omnibus of that, because it is the perfect size for an omnibus. Oh, it totally is. Um, it's such a fun read. I remember when that first came out. You remember how much hate Dan Slott got over that? Yeah, because people were like, you killed Peter Parker. Octavius would never. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, anybody that's read comic books long enough knew, like, oh, let's just have fun. You know, this is not going to last. Come on. Yeah, if Joe Quesada couldn't do that, then nobody can, okay? Right, right. However, the marriage, you know, that's still over. Like, they're still yeah. not together. So that that kind of surprised me. Because they, they even left the loophole there where he could go back and yeah. be... And now I think all we have now is renew your vows as anything that's pre-divorce or pre-them separated. Yeah, that was a that was kind of like an Elseworld story, right? That was part yeah. Of story. Well, I guess that's what we count it as now, Elseworld. All right, Jess, you got the previews up or you got the... the yeah, let's see if I can up. do it. Screen share. Do, do, do. Your entire screen, right? Yeah. Your entire screen. Mm-hmm. Is that to everyone? <clears throat> okay, why is it doing that? Ginger beer. I love ginger beer. Are you seeing that? Mm-hmm. Maximize it. Remember oh. the, the green. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. As your <laughs> Latino IT guy, <laughs> um, I try to help out as much as I can there. <laughs> Do I? Um, do I need to go back and see? I, uh, do I need to go back and hit on uh, me so that it's always present, or is this always present right now? I do, you know, do you know what I mean? Is 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 this the whole screen right now? Holy shit! I believe that's yeah. That's that's going to be a fucking huge week. Um, as long as we're not, as long as we're talking, and you've got that little box around you, yeah, man. That's uh, that's that's going to show the that the. Okay, so you want me to just go over this? Sure, yeah, let's hit the, the high notes. Let's see what we got here. We got a lot of well, books. First thing right off the bat, <clears throat> Absolute Wildcats by Jim Lee. Sorry. 125 bones, discount 50%. IST will give it to you for $62.50. Damn. So lots of people excited about Absolute Wildcats. I mean, that's Jim Lee oversized artwork. That's why everybody or yeah. the people that are getting it. I can think maybe of a few people, inclu- including Gabe, that's actually excited about the story Ooh. content. <laughs> Who ordered an absolute Wildcats aside from Gabe? Apparently, all, everybody that's a Jim Lee fan. And I'm, I'm not going to lie. I think I'm going to purchase it, depending on um, how. So I know. I know. More from you. <laughs> I, like, I like shitty comics, too, man. <laughs> <laughs> My weakness. Um, what else do we have? So, the Avengers in the Infinity Gauntlet, is that a reprint of... I got you. <laughs> what is that? That needs to be just a little lower. Turn it, turn it down just a little bit. It's perfect. I got you. How's that? Perfect. 
Okay. Um, <laughs> then we got Batman and Harley Quinn hardcover. That's going to be good. That is Batman Adventures and Harley Quinn. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> and we have Batman and Superman and World's Finest, The Silver Age. Only I'd be interested in that, probably. Batman by Neil Adams. Boo. Wait, is that another Batman by Neil Adams no, collection? I, th I think it's, uh, in, in my opinion, it's probably um, Batman Illustrated in trade paperback. His omnibus stuff. Really? Okay. I, I, I mean, I can't say for sure, but that's my assumption. I know it's in a pro, uh, not good to assume things, but I'm assuming that's what it is. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Bingo Love. I have no idea what that is from Image. Oh, we're I, starting to get Buffy the Vampire Slayer in the trade paperback format. Omnibus Season Trade Paperback Volume Zero. Yeah. Chimichanga, Chronicles of Claudette. Here's a biggie. Daredevil by Wade and Sam Nee, Omnibus Volume 2. That is also 50% off. 50% off. This next book is 50% off. I will be getting it. Deadpool Minibus Volume Double Zero. Only 75 bucks. Half off. Gets it to you for $37.50. <laughs> uh, I don't know this Humanoids book XO hardcover. I will have to examine that and find out more about it oh, yeah Hell, same here hellblazer trade paperback volume three the inspiration game rebirth oh, oh hellblazer rebirth, rebirth. get that <laughs> yeah here's cool. the biggie infinity gauntlet box hardcover slipcase set a mere 500 bones 42 percent off you can get it for 290 i've been saving up for months i sold my Infinity Gauntlet book. I sold all my Infinity trade paperbacks that Fool. are going to be in this. Fool! Nah, I dig this. This is my kind of thing. I no, dig you this. like those big hardcover slipcases. Good. For I you. love those things. Um, if it, it was oversized, I might have done it, but it's yeah, just, I get it. They're standard size, and I understand that. Go oh. big or go home, Gabe, or Jess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am home. <laughs> What's that? Getting absolute wildcat cats. I won't be getting that. <laughs> uh, nothing against Jim Lee. Uh, fabulous artist. I never got into Wildcats. I actually sold my Wildcats book to a member of the Omnibus group. They're out of print. I mean, I, I could have eBayed them, but he needed them, and I wanted to get rid of them. Oh. What a guy. What a guy. Yeah, that's true. Justice League of America trade paperback. I have no idea what that is. Justice League Power and Glory trade paperback. I have no idea what that is. Big, here's another big seller. Commandy by Jack Kirby. Yes. Yes. That's a biggie. I, that's the, damn it. That comes out next week, too. Tomorrow. Tomo tomorrow. This is yeah. all tomorrow. Yeah. How much is that retail? 125. Ooh. 50% off. 6250. Yeah. Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Lobster Johnson. That's something I'm going to want. From Dark Horse. I'm a Lobster Johnson fan. March of the Crabs. That reminds me of an old girlfriend I had. Yikes. What did she give you? <laughs> March of the Crabs. And we go down to the next big book. Moon Knight by Brian Michael Bendis and Alex Maleev. That's an amazing hardcover because uh, number one has been out of print forever. And that's a big deal that they put that in print. For good things. Yeah, and Omar will be getting that since it's Brian Michael Bendis' favorite. I year. will not, but you guys <laughs> have at it. Uh, then we have a bunch of other interesting books here that I know nothing about, but I'm sure somebody's interested in Pokemon hardcovers, things like that. Uh, here's some PS art books that I know are, we have a member that's going to be buying a lot of those. Jake, I'm sure, is going to be buying a bunch of those. He likes art books. And scrolling down, prison school graphic novel. That sounds like a manga or something. It sounds like a manga or something is right. <laughs> <laughs> then we have some stuff. Red Sonya. 
Sipian hardcover skip beat Spider Man Deadpool by Kelly and McGinnis. I am getting that. Oh, this is a big week for you, Jess. Yeah, it is. Um, I will definitely be getting that. And then the next one here, I will love to get this, and that is the Super Sons trade paperback. Uh, I love it too much to hold out and wait for an oversized hardcover deluxe. I want the trade paperback. That series is awesome. Uh, Sweet Blue Flowers, Swords of the Swashbucklers, Tales of the Batman, Gene Colon, hardcover volume two. I probably will get that. Maybe I'm thinking about it. Uh, this next book is a favorite of mine, and it's been out of print for a while, so it's a great thing they're reprinting it. That's The Sentry. I like that book. The original Sentry, huh? Correct. I, I love the, the whole thing about him. Because the follow-up kind of not good. That's what I heard. Yeah, I never read the follow-up because I heard so much uh, bad stuff about it. But first one I, was good. It was very standalone-ish almost. But Yeah, oh. I really dug it. Uh, for you Squirrel Girl fans out there, the third hardcover is coming out. I really thought that was you, too. I, I could have sworn you love Squirrel Girl. Oh, I never could get into it. I really tried hard, too. Um, something about it just didn't click with me. So I, nothing against anybody that likes Squirrel Girl, though. It's fine with me. I thought that was going to be up your head. I know. I know. Maybe I should give it another chance. And shockingly, another Walking Dead trade paperback, volume 29, the series that just won't end. Oh. War Mother from Valiant. I have no idea what that's about. War Mother, that sounds interesting. And your pal Archie wraps it up. And that is what's coming out tomorrow on In Stock Trades. Yes, outstanding job. Let's see if you can... Get out of this. Let's see if you can get out of this screen share by yourself. Do I, I hit the X, the blue, I mean the red X? Um, I'm not sure what you're saying here. Um, okay, yeah. Oh, boy. You see where it says stop? Uh, no, don't stop broadcast. It's up at the top. I, I know. I'm not going to. Okay, wait a sec. You're she screen sharing and presenting to everyone. Yep, stop. Stop that. Yeah. Stop presenting. What? Yep, you, you did it. Okay. You got it. Now, Oops, but now as, we got... long, as long as the square is out of your box, you're, you're fine. And we can... It will shift between me and Louise. Okay. Are okay. we good? Are we good? We're good. I'm pretty good. sure we're good. This is a pricey sure. week for you, Jess. I'm sorry? This is a pricey week for you, Jess. Uh, yeah, it will be. It's a big hit. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't really haul much, and I'm not going to haul much after that. So, is it, this is pretty much it for the month for you. Um, I don't know. Hey, he says that. <laughs> I know I say <laughs> that. Hey, what are you drinking, Louise? Ginger beer. Oh, ginger beer. I thought you were drinking a Yingling, which we are finally getting in Kentucky. Are you really? Yeah, I know. Like everybody's like, why are you excited about you know semi crappy beer? And I'm like, because it's cheap. <laughs> And every time I go out of state, I have to get a case. John P is in the uh, chat. John P, you didn't get to see that I hauled a Lush box set. You're a fan of uh, alternate music from the early days. Lush is it. So there's Cycle Cleveland. Just so you know, I got some Lush. Not and... to be confused with Psycho Cleveland. Psycho Cleveland. <laughs> and Make Havoc was telling me that uh, Lush was in concert last year. I wish I had seen it. I wish I had seen them. God, I love Lush. And I didn't get to see any of the uh, chat. I'm sure people must have been making fun of me. <laughs> so let me just scroll back. Uh, no, mm -hmm. man. I think you were doing good. I was keeping an eye on the... I didn't, okay. I didn't look at the chat. I was looking at um, your solicitations. I am... Somebody was asking about the com commandy, and are you going to get it, Jess? No. Really? What's stopping you from getting it? Uh, the writing and the art. <laughs> You're not a Jack Kirby fan? No, I am. I I I grew up reading those Fourth World books and Commandy and Omac and everything, and uh -huh. I. <sighs> I've always wanted to read them. I've always wanted to read Commandy. And like Fourth World kind of turned me up. Because, you know, I, I've told you guys, like, my DC started with Christ on Infinite Earths. And then right. then in 
everything afterwards. And I've tried to read things in the before then, and it just never clicked with me. But Commandy was – it always looked like such a standalone book, and I always – those covers really drew me to them. So I thought I was going to get um, – I still have the omnibus pre-ordered, like I think at Amazon for thirty-seven dollars. And Ooh. see what happened was they canceled that solicitation, so they resolicited with a new price. But I'm pretty good at haggling with. I mean, come on, I'm the guy that got the ten-dollar <laughs> omnibuses from Amazon, <laughs> right? So I'll see what I can do. Um, so no, I was just wondering what you thought about it because somebody in the chat said sell me on Commandy and. I kind of want to be sold too because that's a hundred and twenty-five dollar book, sixty-two bucks. You know. Yeah, well, if you can get it for thirty-five or whatever you're getting it for, that's a that's a good deal. All right, let's say I can't. Worst case scenario, I have to buy through in stock trades. What? <laughs> I, I, Tell I, me I, on it. I just have to be honest. I'm just not a fan of Jack Kirby's writing. I oh. love his art, but I'm just not a fan of his writing. I sold my Fourth World Omnibus. That was one of the first things to go in the big clearance sale. When I realized, just it's just me. It's not you. It's me. I uh, I just didn't dig it. And I will, uh, I will say that if you're a fan of Kirby's writing, this is a no-brainer because this is Kirby at his peak Kirbyness. This was him firing on all cylinders creatively. This was him at the top of his game. Yeah, this was him leaving Marvel right the first time and was like. I've got free range, do anything I want. And right. No, nobody giving themselves credit for the stuff that I've created. Like, this dude likes Stanley. Um, if you don't so, mind his writing, you're probably going to love this. And if you like his art, you're definitely going to fucking love this because this is him at his peak. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence about it. I'll, I'll think about it and I'll see what Amazon says. But that's where I am. Um, Absolute Wildcats. I can't believe I'm probably going to fucking get that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when I meet you in person, I'm smacking you with a club. <laughs> For absolute wildcats? Oh, man, I've got a lot worse shit than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just don't admit it. Um, uh, that's a definite buy. I, damn it, I don't fucking want to buy that book. Um, I'm going to pass on the Bendis uh, Moon Knight. I was not a fan. Uh, Spider Man. Loser. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, you know, I hate to say that because. It's just a green screen behind him of Riley stuff. It's, it's just, um. It sounds so repetitive, but I don't think he understood the character of Moon Knight, so he kind of did his own thing. That's why I didn't like it. Hmm. Um. Like, he was like the every man Avenger or something, is what he dubbed them. Like, he could use these. I don't know. I just read the first two issues and it was like not for me. So maybe you guys will, you know, love it because I know Jess is a big fan of shitty stories. Uh, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why am I dead to Gabe? You're not getting the absolute Wildcats, dude. Oh, 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 um, so next week, man, damn, that's a big week, man. A lot of stuff coming out. Expensive week. So the Deadpool minibus volume zero, what does that even contain? I don't, I don't even know what that book is. I, I have the Deadpool. No, I don't. I never got the minibuses. Didn't they make two minibuses? Yeah, there's two minibuses already. The second minibus is better than the first minibus. Uh -huh. um, so, so are you going to get this one too? Yes. You're good. You're going to get this one too. I am. This contains, let me read you the, okay, this contains Suicide Kings, Deadpool Suicide Kings 1 through 5, Wade Wilson's War 1 through 4, Deadpool Pulp 1 through 4, Amazing Spider-Man Annual 38, Deadpool Annual 1, Incredible Hulk's Annual 1, and Fear Itself Deadpool 1 through 3. What? You just like Deadpool. So I do, like, yeah. Any, anything that Deadpool is in. Okay. It pretty much, I'm not a fan of uh, the Mercenaries book that's out now. Uh, the one that, I don't know, it's on like, or is it called Merc with a Mouth or Deadpool and Company or something with a bunch of mercenaries with full killer and everything? I'm not into that one, so I'm not collecting that one. I don't know. I, I kind of stayed away from those books. I, I stuck mainly with the main book, and that was kind of crappy at the time. That was the Daniel Way run. Um, suicide, was it Merc with, Mercs with a Mouth or something where it had Lady Deadpool and Baby Deadpool and Dog Deadpool and Zombie Head Deadpool? 
Is the dog Deadpool? I think. Why shouldn't I? That's I'm just, mm-hmm. I just assume. That's a good point. Or maybe I'm remembering a cover. That's Deadpool and Company. Sure. How dare I get all these Deadpool books mistaken? <laughs> I'm just telling you what it is. <laughs> Deadpool and Company. I don't remember that book. Okay. Uh, well, you enjoy this book, man. Yeah, if you like, I guess if you like the other mini buses, then you'll love this one. Thank you. Um, let's see. So maybe the Spider-Man Deadpool uh, uh, by Kelly and Ed McGinnis. Those, that's the hardcover. I may get that one. And Tales of the Batman by Gene Colan, Volume 2. I've got Volume 1. I may pick that one up, too. I hate those art artist-centric books, though. They're not complete in any way. You're going to pick up the Century, Jess? Or do you I know I already have it, yeah. Does that include a Fallen Sun, where we find out he like had sex with Rogue? Or... No, God, no, 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 no. He had a funeral <laughs> form and everything. That shit was terrible. Oh, God, that was the yeah. aftermath of Siege. Yeah, do you remember Fallen Sun? Yeah, that's. I don't think that's ever been collected in anything, and nor should it ever, ever, ever been ma- mentioned again. <laughs> As in, like, bad. The writers didn't put their name on the cover of it. It was. It was him. He wrote it. The guy that yeah. created uh, Jenkins. Yeah, but he didn't put his name on the cover of it. I wouldn't have either. That book fucking sucked. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was such a horrible. I forgot about that. Jesus, Louise. Like it's revealed that Roe had sex with like he took I'm, her virginity. In I'm it. gonna slap you with my absolute wildcats for reminding me of that shitty book. <laughs> There's a dog that walks into the panel for no absolute reason. Oh man, uh, Ricky C just blew up my plans not to buy anything next week because next week is the final premiere edition of Irredeemable. There you go, Jess. And I'm going to have to get it because I got to read one through five, reread them, and do a video on them because that is my favorite comic book ever. Really? Your yes. favorite comic? I think I've heard you say that before. Uh, people are probably sick of how often I say it. Yeah. <laughs> I say it all the time. Have you recommended it to anybody and they're like, man, this book sucks? Um, it's, it's Mark Wade, right? Yeah. Um, uh, somebody brought it up maybe a couple days ago and somebody in there said I couldn't get into it, but I don't know that they took the recommendation from me. Um, I don't think it would have mattered though, right? If it, if it did. To yeah. me? Yeah, no, I don't care. Or, I, I I like it when people like my recommendations, but you can't love everything. No, no, you're right. You're right. I wish you guys would get more into uh, the Transformer comics, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gotta buy all your shitty Pendus books. So. <laughs> I read the first few issues of the IDW stuff. That shit is good. But they do yeah. it. Stuff is awesome. Yeah. You know, somebody last week was asking if I could show off some of the Ninja Turtles stuff, and they're right here beside me. Yeah, but they do it with Megatron, man. They they do a lot of good things with that character. The first yeah, few yeah. They took they kind of make him into like a Martin Luther King kind right. of character, civil rights leader. Uh, this is a little bit of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles IDW stuff. This is some of the best stuff out there too. Um. Each volume has a different character on the cover. Volume 6 will have Mikey. This is volumes Ooh. 4 and 5. It's Donnie here. Let me show you some of these. Without there's, a, there's something that happens at the end of the last volume that is kind of a spoiler. That's a fun read, man. Oh, these are great. I love the artwork in these, too. I like that Kevin Eastman is back, too. Yeah. Yeah, he's, the, he's kind of the head writer on these books. And they're still going strong. And um, there's several, like some of the mini, like he draws some of the stuff in here, which is really cool to see his artwork back again on Ninja Turtles. I was going to ask, uh, do they have a consistent artist yet? Because that was kind of one of the things that took they, me out. Um, yeah, there's two artists that do it back and forth, and I cannot remember their names, but it's one of them is right here. This one right here. And the other one. I read the first one, and it was like every arc, there was another artist, and I was like, oh, jeez. Yeah, the first volume, like every art, there's a. But once you get to like volume two and three, like there's consistency in their artwork, which is really cool. Because then, then they throw in the miniseries as well. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and the artists in the miniseries aren't the greatest. But yeah, so this is. Uh, they include all the little crossovers, like with the, the Ghostbusters crossover. And just a little bit, man. This is really good. Um, it kind of rewrites the story 
the origin and stuff like that of the Ninja Turtles. But it's intriguing. And there's and if you ever watch the show and stuff, there's always familiar characters that show up. How did I start showing this off? I was talking about Transformers, damn it. Um, oh, yeah, somebody wanted to see it last week. That's why. The Beast Wars is the truth. Yeah, I wish they had done more with that. I think the only thing with Beast Wars that they did was um, Dreamwave started it and then IDW wrapped it up with this little, this is the omnibus of, which is the size of like a manga yeah, so. uh, of Beast Wars. But man, the art is just freaking awesome. Mm-hmm. That seemed like that had, that had so much potential to expand on it, and they never. Yeah, really they could have done so much. They could they could always go back to this stuff, but I think right now they're just focused on Transformers, like the main line, the G one stuff. You know that they just announced that for the movies, Transformers and GI Joe going forward are going to be in the same universe. Uh yeah, it's a good thing those movies don't exist to me though. <laughs> you no, know, it's it's they're starting fresh. It's a completely different universe than the Michael Bayverse. I don't know, man. You really gotta sell me on that. <laughs> like, yeah, those, I know. those movies are pretty horrible. I think I, I saw one, and I thought it was okay, and then two was just like the death of cinema to me. Oh, I was two. done. Two was that yeah. It happened during the writer's strike. That's why. So they didn't know. Exactly. Yeah, but then how does that explain three and four and five? They're all kind of kick ass. Oh, I'm not making excuses for them. They're all shit. But I'm Dude, just saying. Like, wait a minute. Did we just break the record? We had 71 people watching live. I think total, uh, the, the big record is 73. Damn it, Jess. W were you on that episode? Of course. Of course. <laughs> 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 yeah, as soon as you showed your face, I stopped talking about Transformers. We dropped like five viewers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this guy's going to talk about Legion of Superheroes again. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm going to talk about Irredeemable because Michael oh. Curry has a question uh, about incorruptible incorruptible is uh a former villain that has superpowers that turns into a good guy to try and battle the plutonian um in a series that can be read concurrently with irredeemable it's not um necessary there is a like a one issue crossover you don't need to worry about incorruptible because of that crossover it, it's um it, it's fine to just read irredeemable and then you can read Ir Incorruptible afterwards or concurrently. Um, but it, it, in this, my humble opinion, it's Incorruptible is very good. It's not as good as Irredeemable, but it's still very good, very worthwhile to read. Um, he's, um, you know, he's, he's developed a conscience and he's, he's trying to be a good guy and trying to turn his life around. So it, it's an excellent book, but it's not as good as Irredeemable because nothing's as good as irredeemable. So there we go. Wow. I, I want to like read those side by side with you so I can do an anti irredeemable video on my channel. I hate everything about that. <laughs> <laughs> Just to piss you off. <laughs> I tell you why irredeemable sucks and anybody that likes it sucks too. Uh, <laughs> oh, if you watch the film, uh, three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, I did, yeah. Beautiful film. Yeah, uh, I saw that, and I saw the shape. Finally, saw the shape of water right the, the night before the Oscars, and watch that. The I'm, I'm glad reading. they won. Yeah, me too. I love Shape of Water. It was they great. The racist cop. He's reading Incorruptible in the movie. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what he's reading. He's reading Incorruptible. I didn't we have, pick up on that. It, uh, in three billboards, yeah. Oh, I didn't see that movie. Oh, you need to. It's pretty I, solid, man. I just saw Darkest Hour today, the Winston Churchill movie. I love that, but I haven't seen Three Billboards yet. So Biggie Cheese has asked, I think, two or three times already, and he has a really good question. Is which which uh, DC Rebirth Batman book is better, Detective Comics or Tom King's run, and Ooh. why? Ooh. That's, a, and that's a good question, because I'm curious as to what you guys, because you guys just talked about Tom King. So do you guys prefer his run over Detective? And I want to know why, because I'm, I'm curious what, Ooh, God, I love them both. I, I think they're the two strongest books that DC puts out. Uh, yeah, they're up there right along with Justice League of America. Oh, uh, shut up. And <laughs> Suicide Squad. <laughs> Suicide Squad. Um, I'll, I'll be honest. I love Detective. I think I like it more than Batman. And I think it's because it reminds me of like a family book, like a teen yeah. book. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's why. Uh, and it has like 
three of my favorite characters of like the Bat Mythos. It has a uh, Cassandra Cain. Mm-hmm. Um, it has Stephanie Brown, and it has Tim Drake. Oh man, just in the same book every month. Well, with the exception of the few months uh, Tim went MIA, but they even threw Clayface in there, and he became such a likable character. Because at first I was like, Clayface, what? Mm-hmm. This is stupid. And no, it works. Everything about that book works. Yeah, and, it's not really a Batman book. It's a Batwoman book. No, a- you're, you're absolutely right. And I think that's why I like it, because it's different enough. And it's a lot different than Batman is. Don't get me wrong. I love Batman. But right. I think for me, my vote is Detective Comics, because it feels more like a team-centric book. And it makes sense, because we ha- we've always had all these characters in the Batman universe that just writers or editors forget about and they get kind of lost in in there within the panels i can't give you a, a definitive answer because i've only read the first six issues of detective comics and what i read i really loved like i really dug the hell out of it um so much so that at the time i had only read the first six issues of batman by tom king and i was like wow this is a lot better like this is miles better uh just the relationships with all the different characters and like you say the first time I heard Clayface, what the fuck? Clayface on a good guy group? But they make the shit work, and it works really well. And they sell you on the idea of Clayface trying to reform himself and trying to be a better person. They sell you on that shit. I'm like, all right, I'm good to go. Having said that, I'm I'm obviously like 20 plus issues deep into Tom King's Batman right now, so I'm, it's I can't really give you a definitive answer. For well, it. maybe yeah, maybe the fact that you kept going with that. Yeah. Instead of detective is your answer. Right? Well, like, you've gotten back to detective. Right. The fact that you just kept going with Tom King and could have put it down, even though, like I said, those first six issues weren't the strongest, yeah. and you decided to keep going with it, maybe that's the, that kind of your answer lies in there. Yeah. Jimmy uh, Owens, good to have you back. Jimmy's been gone for a little bit. Good to see Jimmy Owens back. How's Nightwing, by the way? Jim Seeley. Um, I like it. I think it's good. It's um, it's one of those books that you don't, you never see people like the top five DC Rebirth books or anything. But it's just because they have a lot of good books, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I think mainly the bad books are to me have just been Justice League and Suicide Squad. Um, and Hellblazer. Yeah. See, I never read. I read. I never read past the first issue of Hellblazer. You don't need to. Because I'm just I'm done with the idea of Constantine being in the DC universe. Like, it never made. It, with, you know, you know. I take it back though. I did like Justice League Dark, the yeah. Peter Milligan book. That was good. I did like that. I like that too. Maybe it was because he worked with all the other characters and they kind of fed off of each other. But the Constantine book, uh, no. Yes, yeah, so you're you're a diehard Hellblazer fan, so you've read all of Hellblazer like to the very end, correct? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, oh. I think we both have. Right? Yeah, I have. Do you feel like? Because I've heard the people that read, it's like the ending, it, it knocks it out of the park. Like, it's really solid. Issue 300, like, yeah. Yeah, do you think it's, it's something where somebody could start from issue one, which is Jamie Delano, go to Garth Ennis, and then keep going all the way through, all the way to issue 300, and there's kind of a bit of a through line? Kind of a bit of a what? Like a through line of a, a continuous story through all 300 issues. Because I really, yeah, my goal this summer is to binge the shit out of Hellboys. Really <laughs> you that uh, you could not spend your summer a better way. I love the original Hellblazer. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. talking about reading a comic. You can oh, read it on the beach if you want. You do live in Florida, so. Um, <laughs> cruise. I'm just trying to think of better way. <laughs> <laughs> I, anyway, love, I, yeah. I did the same thing a couple, well, probably about five years ago, like when I read the whole run of Hellblazer, because it was one of those books that I didn't read as it was coming out, other than a few issues here or there, and I knew who the character was, and I loved it. I loved that run. Even yeah. pushing myself through like some of the stuff like Paul Jenkins, or um, I can't remember what other writer it had, but you know, there's a couple of like not great story arcs in there, but when you get to the good stuff, they're gold, man. They're gold. Who's your favorite writer on the run? Like, if I were to ask you, who would you say is, like, the definitive Hellblazer writer? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know. That is a good question. I'm looking at my collection right now, trying to figure it out. Who? I've read half of the Ennis' stuff, and I've read the Lano stuff, and I'm like, Ennis blows him out of the water, in my opinion. 
I love what. Yeah, I liked Milligan too when he. That's a good question. I don't. I've actually liked all the runs. I I didn't even. I I never picked up on the fact that there were bad Hellblazer runs. I enjoyed every single really? issue. Yeah, that, maybe that's because I don't I don't like smart comics, as you say. Ah, oh, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> but I I really enjoyed one through three hundred just continuously. I just what? enjoyed the heck out of it. I, Milligan's the one that finished it, right? Like, okay, so. I'm trying to remember. Maybe it was Azarello. I didn't like his run that much, too. His run was short, though. It wasn't that long, right? No, it wasn't. It was like 20-something issues at that. Um, Because he took on after... Actually, he... F I think he's either after El Ellis or before Ellis. I've always thought and, of him as kind of a mediocre writer. And then... Um, yeah. I, Wait, I hate what? 100 <laughs> Not I liked his... Um, you know... Okay, I will say this. Like, I loved his hundred bullets. Loved his hundred bullets. Um, and then his Batman Flashpoint was really, really good. Unbelievably good. But saying that, I think Broken City, and I did a readathon of my Batman trade paperbacks. Um, I don't know, whenever, a few years back, because that's what I like to do. I like to read big, huge chunks of characters, uh, starting from my earliest trade to my whatever recent trade is at the time. So I think it was around the time New 52 came out. And Broken City is one of the worst Batman trades I, me, Omar Valdivieso, has ever read. And, <laughs> how do you say your last name again? Valdivieso. Okay. Um, so that is how, like, and, that was, and, and, it was, and it was weird because that was right after Jeff Loeb. That was after Hush. So maybe I was like, no, no, no. It's probably because it's right after Hush and I'm trying to compare it to Hush. And that, that's not doing it justice. I'll go back and read it again. And then I try to read it again. And it was just not, it was missing something. It was, it was missing a lot, honestly. I don't think he captured a voice of Batman. So, but I did really, really enjoy uh, Flashpoint, Batman Flashpoint. Flashpoint has, in to me, my favorite twist oh, ever. Oh, yeah. Ever? Okay. Yeah. And I'm not going Irredeemable has the my favorite ending ever, oh. but but Batman Flashpoint has the greatest twist on a character that I've ever read. I mean, my jaw dropped open. I went, oh my god! I thought it was great. Uh, I'm looking at Broken City now, and I don't remember hating it. Uh, I think it had Killer Croc in it. It had and, lots and it, of people in and it. And it had Eduardo Rizzo on artwork. Yeah. So, um. But yeah, no, I that was. There was another trade. I can't remember what it was called. Um, oh, it was the guy that wrote Stray Bullets. I didn't like his run either on Detective Comics. That was the. I remember two Batman books that stood out of the whole run, and I read. Oh, some David Batman. Lapham. Yeah, I think he had a run. What the hell called? Um, hold on, they're back here. City of City of Crime. So City of Crime and Broken City, to me, were like the two Batman books I had to push myself to read through. And I read through like Hush Returns. Oh, bless your heart! Uh, <laughs> you know things like that, and but those two books, man, I uh, I don't know what it was about them. Heart of Hush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Heart of Hush was solid though, man. That was uh, what's his face, Paul Dini. It was my Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't like it, huh? Okay, that's cool. Um, yeah, those those are the two Batman books I remember just going, man, these are not that great, like at all. Tolga, good night. Oh, he's good out. to have you here. Yes, always. Somebody clean the city of crime stunk. Yes, thank you. Somebody agrees with me. <laughs> thank you. It was bad. It was like, great. And yeah, that was the guy that wrote uh, Stray Bullets. So I remember um, it was Kirk, um, Kirk Kiefer. He's the one that gave me straight bullets because I was like, I'm not ever going to read that book, dude. I, did, I read City of Crime. That book sucked. <laughs> <laughs> and I met up with him because we were part of the uh, Marvel, um, one of the forums. And he lived like an hour away from me and he was in a custom binding. And I had just gotten into it about five years ago. And he was like, oh, no, no, you got to read it. And I finally read it. And I was blown away how different it was when he did, like, he did his own creator stuff. It was awesome. Wait, what book are we talking about? Straight Bullets. 
Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. David yeah. Lyman, right? Yep. Okay, I was making sure. I need to read that. Yeah, that's an amazing book. Oh, that's absolutely. It's a, a brutal book. Yeah, and, it, and it's um, it's still going, still ongoing. Mm-hmm. So that was, I read the first Omni of that, and now I have to wait for a second Omni. Ooh. Gabe is not on the show because he is closing the shop today. Mm-hmm. He's in a res- he's a responsible adult. Yeah, go in there and shoplift. He's the only employee there. Ah, don't say that. You're gonna feel so guilty tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> the guy said right before we ran out the door was just as high. Of course, his dumbass just said, "I've been working at the store alone for the last week." <laughs> he doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> hey Gabe, yoink! Bye Gabe. That's something you want to admit. When I worked at a comic book store, we had the stupidest thief break in, and I say stupidest because, like, he, the guy. It happened like at three o'clock in the morning. The alarms went off. Um, and it, you know, this was like ninety six, I think. Um, and the guy went in there and stole two boxes of comic books. Right, none of the touch, none of the cash. Dude, all he stole, this is going to make Gabe happy, all he stole was Wizard, com- like, magazine comics. Like, just boxes, <laughs> two long boxes of Wizard magazines. And, like, you could find them, like, they, they were following this trail that led to the apartment complex of these just magazines that had fallen out of the boxes. You could tell one of the boxes fell apart. <laughs> I'm like, oh, man, I feel so bad for that guy. He broke in here for no reason, and he stole Wizard magazine. Oh, don't go and try and shoplift. Gabe says, please try. We have more guns than your bank. <laughs> so don't mess with Gabe. <laughs> Where does he live? Texas? <laughs> I thought he was in Vegas. <laughs> the Great Wizard Heist of 1996. I don't know him well. <laughs> oh, maybe we have the uh, thief right here. <laughs> Gabe said it was him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah that was... Uh... You know, we had all these comic books, like, up on the wall, like most comic book stores. They had, like, the first appearance of Venom, or we had, like, a few Silver Age books. Mm-hmm. I always wonder why people didn't go after those, or some behind the glass cases. They just went for the two long boxes of Wizard Magazine. They were just smart enough to not go for Wildcats, at least. I think they were even open. None of them were bagged. Stories by Crazy Metal What? <laughs> um... Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know, I don't know what Gabe's talking about. Maybe he's talking about a store. I thought he was. Mm. I'll be back. Hold on. <clears throat> so you want to take questions from the chat for a couple minutes? Biggie Cheese is asking what we think of Marvel's new fresh start or whatever it's called. Um, I think a Marvel solution to not selling comic books is always a stupid restart, and it's getting old. Even, you know, like they, they see their comics not selling and then they're like, oh, we'll just, you know, we'll do an old uh, DC rehaul of the universe. And I don't think that's what they need. They just need solid storytellers in there that can tell a good story with the and they need to bring back some. I thought that's what and, and honestly, I thought that's what legacy was. I thought legacy was going to revamp these things to have the legacy numbering system back on there. Now we find out that Amazing spider mans starting over again with number one. That's really annoying. Yeah, especially when you're a trade waiter and you have to collect, like, you know, right up there I have the two oversized hardcovers of Spider-Man number one. It, it, like, if I, if I didn't keep up with these books, I wouldn't know where the hell, you know, to collect these titles. I would be buying the wrong oversized hardcover. Right, it's totally confusing. Yeah. Uh, Jeffrey Roberts, no, Irredeemable 5, I believe, is coming out next week. Melwayne coupon for Witchblade. Half. Om- <laughs> Omnidog, you the man. I th- think uh, he misspelled my name. It's Omar, O-M-A-R, not Omnidog. Omnidog, thank you, Ricardo. <laughs> misspelled your name you rat bastard <laughs> wow uh thoughts on avengers infinity war releasing a a week earlier 
yeah, I think we're ecstatic about that. Woohoo! Yeah, anything early is fine with me. Yep, yep. I'm I'm happy to that. All right, Gabe says Legacy was purely to get the comics numbering closer to their 100th issue because people are suckers for anniversary anniversary numbers. Okay, who is the dude in Louise's avatar? I think that's Riley. <laughs> Maybe he has a man crush on Riley and he hasn't told him. And that's his way of telling him. That's our story. Maybe I just like psychoanalyzing people too much. Uh, (laughs) The Thor books are confusing as hell. Yes, exactly. For that reason that the numbering systems are fucked up. You got to get Thor, God of Thunder, Volume 1. Then you got to get adjectiveless Thor. And I think they're starting over again, right? With Mighty Thor? Oh, boy. So there's going to be a new hardcover. (sighs) Anyway, uh, let's see. Um, you guys see Bendis is taking two original works to DC, new stuff, and one is about a comic book writer. Did you hear about that? I, I did not know that. I wonder if that's going to lead like their Vertigo stuff. Because they, they really do need some new Vertigo titles over there. Mm-hmm. Like their big flagship, I thought, was uh, Fables, was the last big thing. Oh, no, but we do have like a bunch of Sandman books coming, like four, right? <laughs> right, that Neil Gaiman has signed off on. And I'm just sure he's just getting a check. But I don't know, man. He loves those characters. I, I can't see him not overlooking the project. Uh, let's see. Benjamin says, oh, guys, I have another question. What Marvel Legacy hardcover came out last week? Mm-hmm. Was it just Marvel Legacy? Wasn't that it? Don't know. Um, I didn't buy anything last week, so I didn't pay attention. I think it was. Remember we made fun of the – it's like a $50 book, and I was like, it has to have more than one issue. I think Gabe knew what it had in there. Oh, 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 yeah, you're right. But did that come out last week? Wasn't that a couple weeks ago the Legacy came out? It was... Maybe it was two weeks ago. An X-Force Volume 3 Omnibus. That, let's see. what X-Force Volume 3. Volume 2 was... Yost and Kyle. You're talking about this, the one by Dennis Hopeless? That run? Well, there was like Cable and X Force, and then X Force. I can't remember. One had Forge and Doctor Nemesis and things like that. Omar, have you ordered Rover Red Charlie yet? I have. It is coming from Amazon. So nice. thank you, Andrew, for reminding me of that. I can't wait to read it. It looks right up my alley. Omar Dog. <laughs> Omar Dog. Uh, thank you, Jimmy Owens. Omar is the man, though. See? I uh, told you. I was trying to tell Jess earlier. You didn't believe me. I don't. Still. Um, Louise loves Riley. Yep. Louise and Riley equals butt stuff. Oh, that's Gabe. I shouldn't even read that. <laughs> um, Vertigo had Sheriff of Babylon recently. and Yeah, that was cool, but that's over and done, right? That was only 12 issues. Oh, Volume 3 of X-Force is the Yost run. Really? I thought that was Volume 2 of X-Force. What the hell is the Volume 2 of X-Force? Oh, you're talking about the miniseries? Does that count as Volume 2? The sixth issue by Rob Liefeld? Why am I talking to Gabe like he's here? He's the one that's answering the <laughs> fucking question. <laughs> okay, uh, here's a question for you, Jess. Jess, which box set opens first, Infinity or Akira? Which one oh. are you opening first? That's a good question. Akira is still down there sealed with my Cowboy Bebop figure on it. Still sealed. My box of shame. I'm afraid Infinity Gauntlet gets opened first. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's got colors and names you can pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> you old racist. <laughs> Why? Well, don't put words in my mouth. I'm just kidding. <laughs> People take that seriously. Yeah, I'm calling the only white guy in the group racist. <laughs> If anybody believes that, then they're gullible. All right, let's see. Uh... <laughs> e. Tyler said, Omar, I watched one of your chats on the other channel. I loved it. But it was kind of like watching your dad make out with someone other than your mom. It felt like you were cheating on Omni Talk. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a creepy way to describe it, but I get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me mad when Jess interviews anyone other than me. <laughs> no, you're you're coming up. I got you set for the for the uh, 
bound comics edition. Oh, the custom binding, yeah. Um, okay, so I was right. It's Cable and X Force. So that that was Volume Three, Gabe. Um, probably not. It didn't sell that well. Matter of fact, it got canceled. So I don't see an Omni of that coming. Uh, here's a question for you, since you're buying this. Is Infinity Gauntlet box set slipcase worth the four fifty or three ninety with a discount? It's actually two hundred and ninety at in stock trades. Two ninety with a discount, and it'll get free shipping. Uh, it, in my what opinion, yeah, I, it's got a ton of great stories in it. I, I love the whole Infinity Gauntlet saga. Um, I remember reading it when it uh, came out. Um, I don't know, back in the early nineties. What I is guess. it? Hold on. Um, you keep talking. What, what does it include? Because I'm going to pull some books out, and you tell me if it includes these. Uh-oh. I don't know offhand what it includes. Probably um, Gabe does. but Okay. So these are the trades that I have. So we have Infinity Gauntlet, the Omnibus, right? And then it we does, have the follow-up, which is Infinity War. It contains that. It does okay. not contain Infinity Watch. Those are the paperbacks I kept. So it doesn't contain these? Correct. Really? I think there's like what 40, 42 issues. Then contain that's weird. So does it go into the Infinity Crusade? And I think there's a volume two. Oh, there it is it's on the shelf. It's got to include Infinity Crusade, right? It does, yeah. Because it's like a trilogy. Okay. So what the what else are they padding it out with? Um, I, I well, let me uh, look on Amazon and I'll tell you in one second. Or I really should go to In Stock Trades. Why don't I do that? <laughs> he said, oh, my God, 290. I can actually try to convince my wife to let me get it. If you're that excited about it, man, go for it. Because it does contain a lot of stuff. Especially if you've never read it and you don't own any of this stuff, go for it. Uh, opinion on Wade's Daredevil? Absolutely, positively awesome. Like, one of the most lighthearted takes on Daredevil. It was funny and quirky. I liked it a lot. Um, I almost double dipped and bought the uh, the Omnis, but I kept my five hardcovers. What about you, Jess? Did you read those? Wade Daredevil? I haven't read them yet. Oh, okay. Luis, did you read them? Absolutely, I love it. Good. Good. Yeah. Okay, the slipcase includes Infinity Gauntlet Prologue Premiere hardcover, four hundred and forty pages. Okay. Infinity Gauntlet. Okay, sorry. Infinity Gauntlet Prologue. Mm -hmm. Infinity Gauntlet Premiere, 256 pages, which I assume is the main six issues. Infinity Gauntlet Crossovers, Infinity Gauntlet Aftermath, Infinity War Premiere, Infinity War Crossovers Volume 1, Infinity uh, War... That's the one, okay. Infinity War Crossovers 2, Infinity War Aftermath, Infinity Crusade, Infinity Crusade Crossovers Volumes 1 and 2, Infinity Gauntlet Companion Premiere hardcover and a poster. Ooh, I'm in it for the poster. <laughs> so that's what that contains. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 I think some of those have never been uh, collected, like some of those crossover books. Because, I mean, they really weren't that essential to the crossover without. With the exception of Silver Surfer or Quasar, I guess. Uh, I have read Chastity Cakes says saw a post on the Facebook page about Ellis's Global Frequency Deluxe Edition that's coming out. Have any of the bros read them? I read that book and loved it. I loved Global Frequency. I can't wait for the Deluxe Edition to come out so I can read it again. Uh, yeah, I haven't read it, so I like a lot Ooh. of his stuff. Yeah, that's I'll probably really, get it. Really good, yeah. I need to read his Wildstorm stuff. The rebooted Wildstorm that just came out last month. Is it? In? I haven't read that either. Um, Michael Curry is asking about the reading order of Thor, but I think Tim Burnham, Burnham answered him. Yeah, he's right. It's just the uh, the Thor, uh, Thor, God of Thunders one and two, and then the adjectiveless Thor. I think there's three volumes of that. And um, Unworthy Thor, right? But that's not being collected in an oversized hardcover. We haven't talked to Riley. He might have um, read David Finch's um, 
the, the Dark Knight story and uh, ended it all. <laughs> Jumped off his roof. <laughs> I don't think he's mentioned it. I think he just watched a lot of anime. Maybe he took a break. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Owens wants to know if you've read Low yet. I have not gotten to my oversized remenders yet. There's one. Aha. Uh, that's right. I promised to read all my oversized remenders. <laughs> Damn it. How much of the material of that Infinity Gauntlet box set is good? <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to. I won't know until I read it all. All right. Infinity Gauntlet, you know, honestly, it's just a dude trying to impress a chick, right? By killing a lot of people. That's the basis of Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah. This is this was good and fun. I like the doppelganger stuff. Uh, by the time you get to this, you're like, man, I'm glad this Infinity stuff is almost over. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you take that as you will. <clears throat> Mileage may vary. Uh, B- Gabe, I think, loves this stuff. Has a giant tattoo of Thanos. Bought the $1,500 Thanos statue. So he obviously loves this stuff more than I do. Oh, I have to get started on Planetary. That's due at the end of the month. Man. You wouldn't even read that, but it's, it's not that great. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I like Planetary. I'm kidding. <clears throat> yeah, uh, it's funny that you... Once you lay it out, yeah, it really is a, about a guy just trying to get laid. Infinity Gauntlet. Oh, yeah, he's just trying to impress this bony-ass chick, man. Look, watch. And it really knows the lengths the guy will go to to get to. I guess that's what, you know, makes her panties drench or something. I don't know. Because she has death, right? So, yeah, even, even I think I was in uh, middle school when that storyline came out. Hey, I got a question <clears throat> because I'm not as well versed in Marvel as uh, you guys are. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I just saw Thor Ragnarok. Uh, Ragnarok. And in it, Hela. Prog- proclaims herself as the goddess of death so is she is she's not death that thanos has a crush on is she also a goddess of death in in like norse mythology uh as guardian terms and she's different than the universal death do you know what i'm saying i do know what you're saying but i think in if you're talking about the marvel cinematic universe they if they're going to go that route, you might as well use an established character. So that would be the logical way to go. But I don't think they're going to go that route. I, I don't see them going the whole death route with him being infatuated with her. I really just don't. I think they're going more the infinity route. And I mean infinity as in... Um, no, what I meant is are, are they're two different people though, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. In the comic books? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, you know, like so. How can one be a goddess of death and the other one's death? She, is she? She's not death. The Hela is not death. Are you really trying to make me, <laughs> me explain comic book logic to you? <laughs> it's just a question. Because <laughs> I don't think I, 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 I can't. I've been reading comic for over thirty years. None of it makes any sense to me. <laughs> okay, that's. I, I accept that. <laughs> no, I, I mean, loved, I loved Ragnarok, by the way. I just absolutely <laughs> love that movie. Look, Gabe has the answer. Death is the entity of death, like death in Sandman. Okay. I don't know how that makes more sense than what I just said. Uh, <laughs> not, I, I don't know. Whatever. Science, it's fine. Comic book science and logic, Jess. That's how. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have any more questions? I think we lost all uh, we lost all our cool points when I was like, I don't understand comic book logic or death. That's my bad, guys. <laughs> and people in the chat are like, I'm not going to ask that asshole anything. <laughs> he doesn't understand the difference between hell and death. I'm sure there's going to be somebody that's going to type in the comment section. Uh, actually, Omar, it happened in Fantastic Four issue three seventy four. And you know it's going to be Gabe too. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to correct me. 
Uh, yes, hope- we are too. <laughs> because that's a book I already said I would double dip on is the Thor run by Jason Aaron. Because mm-hmm. you know they don't cl- they don't include the five issue miniseries of Unworthy Thor. <laughs> There's no oversized hardcover edition of that. So just because of those five bucket issues, I'm gonna buy an omnibus. <laughs> <laughs> Is Powell's Hillbilly any good? Has anybody read that? I have not. Mm. I've heard it's set in the Goon universe, though. But I haven't read it. Oh, I really? Read it either. Yeah, I have to read. I have to finish Goon. I never finished. I'm like two trades behind. I enjoy that book. Oh, I love that book. How does it end? It end pretty well? I liked it. Yeah. <clears throat> it's satisfying. At least for me, it was. Good, good, good. I remember telling uh, the story where why it took me so long to read Goon. To uh, I was trying to explain it to Jess one day when I was drunk during an episode. <laughs> and, Can you and, be more specific? Shut up. <laughs> and I remember I, I rewatched that episode and I'm like, oh my god, like I think I can't remember where I was going with that story and I kind of lost my train of thought and Jess cuts me off going, oh yeah, that was a great story, Omar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to make out. I, I was like, where was I going with that? Anyway, so the reason why a friend I waited years for, like, a friend had been recommended it to me for like years. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, I'm like, eh, whatever, dude. Anyway, now this guy uh, works at DreamWorks Animation. And I'm like, oh, man, maybe I should read these good books finally. That's because we were talking about like movies and stuff at the time. Anyway, mm. now it makes no sense at all. My bad. <laughs> Uh, how's Six Gun? I've read the first book and I enjoyed it, Same. but I haven't read any of the other books. I've read the first three. Oh, yeah. No, the first two. Sorry, first two. If you're a fan of Jonah Hex. You enjoy it. But it's a fun horror western. I love that people remember all these little things I've said through these episodes. Oh, people are jamming me up on stuff that I said I was going to read back in 2016 still. (laughs) Yeah, but you... I can't even remember exactly my words were, but now everybody thinks I cry after sex. (laughs) (laughs) I remember that episode. (laughs) I think think it might have been me talking about how I cried during when I read comic books and somebody was making, maybe it was gay making fun of me. And I said, well, at least it's not crying like during sex or something like that. (laughs) I remember that your words got totally twisted around. It was hilarious. And yeah, that is not what people heard. Apparently. (laughs) Oh my god. Michael Curry is out. Black Racer and Death of the Endless. Death of the Endless? She's adorable every time. Yeah, she's hot. Death of the Endless is gorgeous. She's a stutter. We can go back to the tape. <laughs> <laughs> Luis, you buying physical copies again? Comics no. Guide 101. Mm? No, I'm not. <laughs> Stuck on that digital world, huh? Well, yes, I am. It's cheaper for the most part. Although that Absolute Swamp thing is going to bring me out of retirement for that one book. You really should do like an updated uh, tour of your books Ain't episode. No- and it's just going to be your tablet in one of your like empty shelves. <laughs> That's nothing to see, man. You know how much clickbait that would be? People would hate you, but I think it's funny. I just have manga. That's pretty much... The only thing on my shelf right now is like manga and a few spare trays and hardcovers. That's about it. That that is worth jack shit that I just want to take to the library. A few of them that are on on there. Uh, That that is an excellent question, Matt Miranda. When are we having a wire review? (laughs) Asking for a friend. (laughs) (laughs) Show is brilliant. How is Jess not watch this? How is Gabe like refuse to admit the, the wire is excellent? I've never seen it. I haven't just I just haven't seen it. You haven't seen it? Oh dude, it's so good. I know. I hear everything great about it. I have trouble turning on the TV and watching it. Damn, Melanie Cleveland just dropped the best question I've ever <laughs> yes. I'm All scared right. of both of them. <laughs> Answer the question, Jess. Our, our friendship. I'm scared of both of them. I I'm 
even from the grave, they scare me. That is difficult. Um, uh, so the question is, Jess, Tupac or Biggie? Come on, Jess. Oh, I'll say Tupac. <laughs> Same. Yep, me too. Only because the sheer output in what he's what he did. Um, I think he's had a larger lasting influence in hip hop in terms overall. Uh, not not to because Biggie was you know he's Biggie. Um, yeah, he was solid but, too. Right, but towards the end of Pac's life, you started getting more of the person that was the philosophizer, you know, in interviews and things like that. The one that started to realize his influence on culture and things like that. And I really would have liked to have seen what he would have become. Uh, I think he, <laughs> he was definitely very, very like lyrical. He was a lyrical mastermind. Oh, I love that guy. Um, the follow-up question is, name one Tupac song. <laughs> Call me dog. I, I just want to see what's on Gabe's or uh, Jess's computer right now. Wondering how he's spelling Tupac. <laughs> T-W-O. Let me, see if I, let me see if I have any Tupac on my uh, playlist here. You can't <laughs> love and you can't be Hail Mary. Those are the artists. T. Gabe, not doing the wire, but we can do the review of the shield. Gabe, you know the shield's like a poor man's like wire. Stop. I got Timberland. Does that count? No. Okay. <laughs> I have... Uh, T Pain, T I. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> just don't know the difference between. I don't know. I don't know what goddamn Soldier Boy tell him I got. Uh, this, is, this is this is all stuff that transferred over when my like daughter was living. Talking mix. What are we? No, my my daughter was living in the house. You know, back when she was in high school, and all this stuff was on my computer that she listened to, and it all transferred to my iPhone. So I've got all this music on here, you know, the, with the Smiths and the Smithereens and stuff. And then you got uh, Simple Kid and She and Him and Sean Colvin, who I – Shaggy. Who the hell's Shaggy? I don't even know. <laughs> Sean Kingston. I don't know who the hell that is. We could do a whole episode where Jess, like, just <laughs> gripes about who the hell these people are. This ain't artists. <laughs> Who are these people on my iPhone? I don't even know. <laughs> Rihanna featuring Jay Z. I do have a Rihanna song that I downloaded though. Um, uh, yeah, bitch, bitch, better have my money. That one. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody in the chat is just <laughs> stop. <laughs> <laughs> Just stop. <laughs> I was having fun with that, actually. It was really nice. Soldier Boy, tell him. Ooh. You have just listened to like three hip hop songs and reviewed them every week. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> you should pour root beer on like CDs and albums of like rap artists that have come out in the last 10 years. Like, depending if you like them or not. That, I'd watch that channel. <laughs> right, just as homework nwa what do you got omar um man nas wait no he didn't know but he liked he i'm sure he he was what like when nwa dropped yeah. jess was probably like in his late 70s so he <laughs> knew he existed <laughs> Fucking, hey i'm taking a beating here <laughs> i'm kidding guys um, I will say this. I do have like five CDs of Public Enemy. Does that count? I love Public Enemy. Yeah. Saw them live finally a couple of years ago. Did you? Yeah. I was in Memphis, Tennessee of all places. It was a music festival. DJ Jazzy Jess. <laughs> that used to be my nickname before Omnidog. I was Jazzy Jazz. What? That's awesome. Why aren't you DJ Jazzy Jess? That's brilliant. <laughs> they called me Jazzy Jess before it was Omnidog on the page. I can see Jess like in Kendrick Lamar. Yeah, I can see that. Jess, pour root beer on that phone, please. <laughs> uh, okay, so NWA Nas 50, like first 50. I, don't know, I, know, I never was a fan of 50. I liked, uh, you know, I really liked Eminem when he first dropped. I thought he was he was good. Marshall Mathers LP? Dre. Yeah, yeah, Dre. You need some Dre in that life. Out out of NWA. 
Memphis Bleak. Oh, Got to throw some uh, public enemy. Jay-Z in there, too. Anyway, um, so <laughs> comic books, huh? <laughs> if you're interested in Infinity stuff, yeah, go for that in Tribe Call Quest. Thank you, Matt Miranda. Um yeah, go for that Infinity Gauntlet box set for 290 bucks if you don't own this stuff, if you're interested in the Cosmic Universe. Um, Gabe, Gabe's buying it, Jess is buying it. I own the trades, and I own the uh, omnibus of Infinity Gauntlet, so I'm, it's a pass for me. <laughs> Josh Balderas. I thought this was Omnibros. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, I started reading my iTunes playlist, and his workout iTunes. We were just wondering what he's doing, listening to the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like DC is going new 25th anniversary. Yeah, 25th anniversary reprints of Batman Nightfall. How they're different from the Omni's or the old phone books? There's just going to be a lot more. Same material. What do you think, Jesse? You picking these up? Uh, I'm actually hurting myself with my eye roll. <clears throat> Man, that's the storyline that just won't die. Nightfall. <laughs> they keep digging that shit back up. Yeah, that haunts me all the time. We still don't have the third omnibus, and they already announced the 25th anniversary collections of Literary Paperbacks. Wait, wait, wait. They still haven't released the third omnibus? No, still not out yet. We just oh. got the first two. The third one is the one that completes it with Night's End and uh, Prodigal. It's a Prodigal, really? I think. That ends. They have a 25th anniversary. Wow. Yeah, next this year. So I think the third one drops next month, though. It'll come out before uh, Absolute Transmet 3. Question, what is Lemire's second best series behind Sweet Tooth? Mm. Mm. Uh, Black Hammer. But it's a yeah. series. Black Hammer solid. <laughs> yeah, Black Hammer and then Sweet Tooth. Yeah. Black Hammer solid. We're getting a hardcover of that, right? Mm. Uh, I think so. I think I heard that we were. In five years, I'll publish the 30th anniversary. <laughs> that's usually what happens. Yeah. yeah true. How many times have we gotten Batman Year One and Dark Knight Returns? Plenty. Ah, that was such a bullshit absolute. Was it just the four, four issues and then Dark Knight Returns? Is that it? What, the absolute? Mm-hmm. No, Batman Year One was the four issues... With the original coloring, and oh, then the no. again with the recoloring. Just yeah. a I know a lot of people that have that. I thought it was both Dark Knight Returns and Batman Year yeah. One. Uh, what the hell did Gabe do? Check our Omni Bros chat. Here to look at it. Uh. It's a picture of Gabe eating a kid. I'm not uh, getting anything because I must be broadcasting from it. Who did Who did the art, Gabe? Not that anybody can see. I did check out Earl Gray's stuff, like his uh, his YouTube channel. I just haven't um, I subscribed. I'm sorry, I have not watched any of the videos, so. So I'm going to Doomfella. I have not forgotten. So he is a subscribe. Just got busy at work today. Jess, what does C R E A M stand for? Cream was Ginger Baker, Jack Bruce, and Eric Clapton. That's who Cream is. Look at you. The greatest supergroup of all. I think you know what, Jess, you probably like Wu Tang Clan. Seriously? <laughs> I like Wu Tang. I could see that. Sure. Did you listen to that Black Did you go see Black Panther, Jess? I did. Did you listen to the album? The uh, I haven't album? yet. I like the soundtrack, but I haven't listened to the songs yet. It was a Kendrick album, basically. Right, that's what I heard. It was basically just one long Kendrick album. <clears throat> Even the songs that he wasn't listed as being on he was still on <clears throat> i did not go to the cream reunion in 2005 it was in london and even i'm not that crazy <clears throat> cream
cream is the shit. Earl Grey <laughs> likes DuckTales. Sold. Omar, look up Don Lauren Storm and Triage, Triage Empire. Okay, let me write that there. All right, guys. Did we answer enough questions? Are you guys tired of each other yet? Oh, I didn't know they had Madison Square Gardens also. Uh, I didn't go there either. We're still talking about cream. Yeah, this is part of the show where Jess ignores everyone. When we're yeah. <laughs> Are we ready to wrap up? Sure, man. Let's now wrap it I, up. Now that I've made a complete fool of myself reading my playlist. Mm, we also don't know anything about comic books till we did. I admitted that. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk once more about our fabulous sponsor in stocktrades.com where you can get up to 50% off on your trades in the United States. If you order over $50 worth of books, the shipping is free. There are loyalty discounts, bomb proof packaging, and the best customer service in the world in stocktrades.com. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt Miranda, I have seen Rush. As a matter of fact, I saw him in Sacramento um, when I was in college. So there you go. You said Rush, and I thought he was talking about the movie Rush. <laughs> nope. Like a few years ago. Could, yeah. Uh, Omar, where yes. can they find you if they want to get more? of your knowledge of comics <laughs> they can find me on my channel near mint condition that is my youtube channel and um, we post a new episode every thursday awesome luis where can they find you uh you can find me at comics guide 101 where i really should be posting a video up on that page soon <laughs> jesus it's been like a month uh you can find me on twitter as well same deal yeah check me out you can find me <clears throat> on Omnidogs Vault on YouTube and on Instagram, Omnidogs underscore Vault, where I posted today a picture of fabulous root beer machine that I found at a place called Damn Good Burger in Alexandria. They had main root beer on tap. It was to die for. Wow. Yeah, I was pretty excited really really like root beer i do <laughs> did, you, did you buy the machine the tap <laughs> i should have <laughs> near mint condition is his cheating channel <laughs> that's funny oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, no I love, on us, yeah. I love everybody <laughs> equally i'm a polygamist polygamist <laughs> All righty, that ends it tonight for the Omni Bros, where at one point we had 71 viewers, close to the record. That rocks. So, everybody, peace and love, peace and love. Thank you for tuning in. Good night, and everybody. On behalf of my fabulous co-host, Luis, it was great you could join us. Thank you for doing so. It was fun. Thanks for having me. It's great having you and Omar, as usual. And we say good night, all. Have a good night. Good night.